All right, everyone, welcome to our A to J Author New User Training today. My name is Jessica Bolak, and I am the Program Coordinator here at the Center for Access to Justice and Technology at Chicago Kent. Just a quick reminder before we get started, you all are on mute. If you have a question, please raise your hand or put that question in the question box. And if you're not joining us today uh, via mic with a microphone, you can also put comments in that question box. You are calling in today. You need to enter uh, by phone. You need to enter your audio pin to be heard. And this session is being recorded and might be posted on adajauthor.org. So today's topic is how to create repeat loops. And on the agenda, we have what is a repeat loop. Repeat loops can be done in two ways. The first of which is collecting the number first. And the second is asking the end user if they'd like to add more um, at the end of the loop. Then we'll talk about how to use variables within repeat loops and additional resources. So for each one of these sections, I will um, go through the PowerPoint, explain it, and then we'll go into the software and um, play around with it a little bit to show you firsthand. And um, then we will, uh, I'll take questions on each section. So if you do have questions, just hold them till the end of each section. So first, sorry guys, my phone is ringing. Um, first is what is a repeat loop? A repeat loop, also known as a repeat dialogue, is a series of questions that will display to the end user multiple times based upon the user's input. You can use a repeat loop if you're trying to collect the same type of information over and over again. Instead of creating those questions new each time, you create the repeat loop and it will ask the end user the same set of questions. So example, you'd use, for example, you'd use this for the names and birthdays of multiple children, um, the list of assets uh, and their values, so you don't have to ask over and over again. And repeat loops can be done in two ways. The first way is to collect the number of items or people um, before the end user begins the loop. And the second way is to ask if there are any more items or people to add at the end of the loop. Both ways have the same outcome in A to J author. So the first way is to collect the number first. You use this when the end user will know right away how many times they're going to need to go through the loop. You ask the number up front. So this is good for asking how many children a person has. Theoretically, the end user will be able to answer the question, how many children do you have, um, without having to think too much about it. And the first step, there are seven steps for creating this repeat loop, the first way, collecting the number first. The first step for either way um, that you do repeat loops is to script a set of questions that you want to repeat. So think about all of the things you want to collect from the end user. The second step is to actually create that counting variable. So the counting variable is the way to tell A to J basically to uh, keep repeating the questions. The counting variable keeps track of how many times the user has gone through that set of questions. And each set of repeat loops has a unique counting variable. And the variable should always be type number. And the way that we do it here at A to J Author, um, so we have within the A to J Author community kind of a standard for naming things. You can see that here on the right. Um, usually capitalize the first word and lowercase space between every other word in the variable and then a two-letter indicator. So D, A, is date, T, E, text, and new number. However, with counting variables, to, so that you can easily see which ones are your counting variables and which aren't, you can label them capital, first letter, no space, and the word count. So my counting variable here is child count, and I don't put a number, put the NU indicator, even though it is a number. The third step in this process is to create your first question. So this is your how many question, how many children, how many pets, how many whatever you're asking the end user. <coughs> Um, uh, step four, on that how many question, you want to set the counting variable um, in the options field on the buttons tab. And when we get into the software, I can show you firsthand, but this is just an overview right away. Step five is to identify the counting variable in the counting variable field on the questions tab for only each question in the repeat loop. 
So this is not our how many question. We've moved on to the set of questions that um, we want to repeat, and we have created a new question. This one is asking, for example, the child's uh, date of birth. It looks exactly the same as other questions in A to J author, except at the end we have, at the bottom of the question design window, the questions tab, counting variable, and I put in child count, which is that variable I created in the other screen. You do not add this counting variable to that how many question. By indicating at the bottom here that you want to include a counting variable, it's telling A to J author, um, repeat this question. And we don't want the how many question repeated um, each time the, the end user goes through the loop. So step six, on the last question of the loop, where this is the last one you want to repeat, you have to select from the buttons tab, uh, increment counting variable. So that's in the options, it'll say normal set uh, counting variable to one or increment counting variable. This is the increment counting variable. This tells A to J author that this is basically the end of the loop. And again, you always put your counting variable in for questions within the loop. So when the end user presses this, the continue button each time they go through the loop, A to J author will add the one to the number, uh, to the counting variable. And then the final step for uh, creating a repeat loop by collecting the number first is to create the advanced condition. So you want A to J author to evaluate whether um, the number of times you've gone through the loop is greater than or equal to whatever number the end user told you in the how many question. So here on the left, we have the question design window conditions. It's the advanced tab, and it's blank when you first start it. So you want to add a condition with the plus sign. And your condition is you want, after the user presses the continue button, you want A to J author to evaluate whether child count your counting variable is greater than or equal to the variable that you set as um, in that how many question. So in the how many question, I asked how many children do you have? And when the end user answered, I told A to J to save that number in the variable number of children and you. So with this evaluation, the condition is comparing the number held by the counting variable to the number the end user gave in their how many question. If this is true, then um, a to J author goes, takes the end user out of the loop. If it's false, and this the you haven't gone through the loop um, the same or more times than the end user told you they needed to go through the loop, it goes back through the loop again. I know this is kind of confusing, but we will go over it again when we go into the software. And this is more on the advanced condition itself. You can see it up close, whatever your counting variable is. You got my highlighter. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so whatever the counting variable is, is on the left here, and then the greater than symbol equals, and always put your variables in brackets within A to J author. And here's how it looks in the flow chart. So this is a blown up of the A to J author um, guided interview I'm going to show you guys in just a second. It has the first question, my how many question is right here, the second question shown. And then I have my first repeat question, my second repeat question within the loop. And then I also have a question that's completely out of the loop, but still in this, in this uh, step. And here the little arrow, the curved arrow, is a symbol that's showing you that these questions are part of the repeat loop. So I have two questions within the repeat loop, three that are not in a loop. And then before we go on, we're going to go into the A to J author software. And I've created a simple guided interview, basically um, mocking if someone wanted to create a will. So the first thing they'd want to do is talk about their children, and then I ask them about assets later. So I will show you, here is the flowchart, and here's what I was talking about um, with the symbol for showing that it is in a repeat loop. And we can go into this how many question. This is the how many children do you have question. It's not in the loop, it's the intro to the loop. And I don't have a counting variable here because I don't want this to be repeated. In this question, I've set up the variable number of children and you. I've given my um, end user a value I 
did a minimum value of zero children and a maximum value of 20 children. And I did it as a drop-down list so that they could just pick um, a number. And then to make this part of the, the intro to the repeat loop, we go to the continue in the buttons tab. And I have a destination question, so that's the same as any other A to J author uh, question. Here I have to send this somewhere, I have to send the end user somewhere after this. And this destination question was the first one in my um, loop. So to do as an intro to the loop, you have to set the counting variable to one. Normally, it would look like that. When, you, when a question isn't part of the loop, you, you don't um, choose this option. But because I want to make it part of the loop, set counting variable to one, and my counting variable is child count. So then we can preview through the loop. When I'm doing uh, A to J guided interviews, I always like to keep the interview script and the interview variables open. Um, it helps me see if there's any errors popping up right away. So it might be a helpful tip. So the question, how many children do you have? And I've already asked the end user their name and their gender, so I have an avatar populated right here. So let's say the end user chose that they have two children. Then it takes me to the first question in the loop. So you can see here in the interview script that I have set the repeat variable to one. And it knows that I am using repeat variable child count. And we are on to the first set of the repeat. So the first name of the child. And it asks me questions about the first child. What is this first child's name? And we'll talk about ways to use the variable macros in a second. And then I've collected the information. It evaluated whether child count was greater than or equal to the number of children. It's false because I had entered earlier that the number of children was two. And so we haven't gone through it two times. It's now going to take me to the loop again. And it increments the repeat variable, so it, it notes that it's been through it once, and it's going through it again. So what is the name of the second child? Collect second child information. And when I press this continue button, it's going to evaluate again whether we're finished with the loop. As it notes here, the child count now is greater than or equal to the number of children, too. So it's true, and it's moved me on to the question out of the loop, so the question about um, a guardian for their children. And we're out of this child loop. Okay, are there any questions before I move on to the second way? If you just want to raise your hand, and I can unmute you if you have questions about um, asking for the number up front. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions, so we'll go back to the presentation. The second way for doing a repeat loop is to ask the end user if they want to add more information at the end. So when would you use this kind of, this option? You would use this option when the end user likely will not know how many times they need to go through the loop. After they complete the loop of questions, you ask them if they want to add another one. So for example, this is good for assets. So people may not know off the bat um, how many assets they would like to include in their will. Instead of forcing them to make a list ahead of time and then choose a number and only go through the loop that many times, you can let them keep adding assets um, as you go along and asking questions about those assets as well. And it lets them build a list in A to J author without having to stop and take that time before they go through the interview. So again, the first step is to script that set of questions that you want to be repeated. Think ahead of time how many times or how many questions or what questions you want to ask repeatedly of, of your end user. The second step is to create that counting variable again. Again, remember, um, you want to make sure it's a number in the type. That's very important. And as you can see here, this question is asset count. It's counting variable is asset count. And again, no two-letter indicator for counting variable. Step three is the create the question that leads into the loop, but again, is not part of the loop. This is the equivalent of that how many question. But instead, this question is asking, do you have assets that you would like to include in your will? Yes or no? Um, then, on this question, you want to set the counting variable to one 
in the Options field on the Buttons tab, the same way that you did in, um, in the first How Many question, you set the Continue button as um, set counting variable to 1 and included the counting variable. On this one, if they answer yes, you want to take them into the loop. If they answer no, you don't want to have to have them go through loop questions, so you take them out of the loop. It doesn't even go into the loop. So the yes uh, button will take them into the loop. No button will not. No button, you just set a destination question and leave it alone. With the yes, you have to set a destination question, change the option to set counting variable to 1, and include the counting variable. Um, here it's at that count. The fourth step is to identify the counting variable in the counting uh, variable field on the question tab for every question to be repeated. Remember, this is only for the questions to re be repeated, not that first introductory question. So uh, questions within repeat loops look exactly the same. The only thing you have to do is add at the very bottom a counting variable to tell A to J that it is part of this specific loop. And step five, on the last question to be repeated, you again ask the end user if they'd like more. So do you have any other assets to add? Yes or no? Yes, we'll take them through the loop again. No, we'll take them out of the loop. And a little bit more behind this step five, this is the same as that intro question. For A to J in, the, um, in this way of creating repeat loops, your introductory question and the last question are the same. It's do you have any you want to add? Yes, takes you to the loop again. No, takes you out of the loop. So you can see the two options here, the two differences. Okay, we're going to go into the software again to show you this one. So I am in my second and my third step here, and this is repeat loops asking to add more at the end. So I hit continue. And do I have assets that I would like to include in my will? If I hit no, it takes me to the end. I've moved out of the interview, I'm done. If I do have assets that I want to include in my will, I click yes, and it takes me through the loop. What is the first asset I would like to include in my will? So let's say I have a house. My house is worth $300,000. Continue. Do I have any more assets I'd like to add? Um, yes, I do have more assets to add. Let's say I have a car I want to include in my will. My car's value is $10,000. Do I have any more assets that I'd like to add? Let's say I have one more asset that I would like to add. I own a boat, and my boat is worth $5,000. Do I have any more that I'd like to add? You can add a learn more that asks your end user what, or that is as if your end user was asking you, what assets have I already entered? Sometimes when you're going through this, um, the end user may not be keeping their own list, so it's helpful to remind them what they've already included. So if you click on the learn more, um, we'll talk about using the information you've collected in variable macros, but this is an example of it. I'm telling the end user, you've already entered house, car, and boat. So then this reminds them what they've entered, and you're still in the question asking if they have more assets to add. So let's look at this question. Do you have any more assets to add? Here's the asset count in the counting variable. If they answer yes, it's taking them to the destination question of what is that asset. Um, it's going back into the loop. I increment the counting variable on this, and I always make sure to have my counting variable listed. If they selected no, it would take them out of the loop, and it would take them to their finished question in my interview here. Okay. Any questions on creating repeat loops the second way, where you ask if they want to add more at the end? Just make sure to raise your hand if you do have any questions. Okay, I'm not seeing any, so we'll go back to the presentation and we'll talk about variables in a repeat dialog. So variables are set up the exact same way that you do in a normal question. So if you want to ask the child's first name, for example, same variable, child, first name, TE. There's nothing special about setting up variables um, 
besides the counting variable in repeat loops. So that's good news. Um, the only difference, again, at that very bottom, counting variable, identify that the question is part of that loop. A neat thing about A to J author is that you don't have to create new variables for every single child. So you're never going to be able to create ahead of time. You'll never know what the answer will be to that how many question. They could have anywhere from 10 children, 2 children, 20 children, whatever your limit is. And you don't want to have to create a variable, child, first name, TE, 20. Um, A to J author does that for you. So it creates basically multiple values for the child first name if it's part of a repeat loop. And it shows you that in the preview screen, um, in the variable preview, um, it creates a new variable. So child first name TE1, child first name TE2, child first name 3, child first name 4. And it shows you all the different options or all the different values the end user has created. You still, it's still the same variable, child first name TE, but A to J author, as you can see down here, puts a pound sign. So child first name TE, pound two, pound three, pound four, whatever it is. And so it has multiple values for that same variable. It does a lot of the hard work um, each time for you. So how can you use all of these um, variables? You can call up all of the values gathered for one variable through the repeat loop. So A to J author will separate those values with a comma and automatically add in that and right away. So in this question, I asked, it was the how many children do you have? They answered four. We went through the loop four times, and the end user input their children's names as Jane, Anne, John, and Jim. And then I wanted to say, after the loop, I wanted to use those names to personalize the interview for them. So the next question out of the loop, I asked, who would you like to make the guardian of those children? And I wanted to give the name of those children. Those children. So the way to do that, to include all of the values um, that have been collected for that variable, is the percent sign, percent sign, brackets, variable name, close bracket, percent sign, percent sign. It's a variable macro that calls up all of the values that have been input there and neatly organizes them for your end user. Another way to do it um, is to, or another way to use it, is to show the value gathered for a variable according to which round of the loop you're on. So I went to ask, um, I asked this question, you know, what is this first child's name? The end user entered Jim. And then the next question, instead of saying, what is your first child's birth date? Make it personalized. What is Jim's date of birth? And to do this, you have the variable macro, percent sign, percent sign, open bracket, variable name, TE, and then the pound or hashtag symbol, the name of your counting variable, close the bracket, percent sign, percent sign. So you can see the formula for it here and in play in A to J author. Another way to use the variable macros is to actually show the word first, second, fifth, Third, um, make it clear which, which child you're on, which one you're talking about, or how many times, basically it shows them how many times they're, they've gone through the loop as well. So you use that by using the formula percent sign, percent sign, the word ordinal, um, parentheses, brackets, counting variable, close brackets, close parentheses, percent sign, percent sign. It's kind of a tricky formula, but it's really neat to show um, your end user that you're working and you're, um, you're thinking of them and helping them through the process as you go along. So um, as always, this is in A to J Author Guide if you forget this, this formula. And you can always email me and I'll send you uh, the formulas as well. Um, and then just quick to show you in the software here what this looks like and the different ways I've used it. We'll go back to our beginning. How many children? Um, we'll make it easy on ourselves. We'll just do, if I can select it, two children. Continue. Their names, it remembers that I've already input this information. Here's Jim's birthday. So I'm using the variable macro, child name, and what child we're on by indicating hashtag child count 
within the question. So put Jim's birthday. And here again, I'm using it. What is the name of your second child? This one has the ordinal child count. Make sure to have those brackets and parentheses and then close them on the end or you'll come up with an undefined variable. And again, it's personalizing it to what is Emily's birthday. And here I have collected um, the information of everything this end user has entered as the names of her children and personalize it. So how would I like to make the guardian of specifically Jim and Emily, the children she's input? And that one is percent sign, percent sign, and the variable, and it will include all of the values that have been input. Whoops. Go into the next set of questions, and again, on this last question, do you have any more assets? We've entered some assets before, and the end user is thinking, well, what assets have I already entered? And they can have a list here that they've entered house, car, and boat and whether or not they want to then go through the list some more. So are there any questions on that part, um, what we can do with variables? Okay, so let's go, I'm not seeing any questions, so we'll go back. So, and we have here some more information about repeat loops. You can always go to the A to J authoring guide pages 105 to 111 are on writing repeat loops, and page 46 to 47 is on variable macros. And I see we have a question. Um, the question is, for the asset question, how do you let the end user um, out if they answer yes by mistake? So in the asset question, they answer yes by mistake. So say they, they have entered the house, the boat, the car, and they say, oh yeah, I want more. And they actually don't. They can always just go back and enter no. And then they're taken out of the loop. Does that make sense, Laura? Okay. Um, and then another question, what is the best way to avoid an infinite loop? Um, what do you mean by an infinite loop? They'd always be um, taken through the, they keep going through the loop basically. You always want to give them an out. Um, with the out, it would be that no question. So do they want to continue? Or um, let's go back to that question. Do you have any more assets to add? Let them always have the no option. So let no take them out of the loop. Or for the children question, um, a way to prevent the loop from going on forever is to open this one. Is in the field to limit the amount of values they could put in. So if you didn't have any limit here, the end user could put any number in for the number of children. Um, and if they mean to put in 10 and they actually add an extra zero, you could get 100 times through the loop. Um, this limits them to uh, what they put in. Okay, are there any questions? Any more questions? Okay, um, if there aren't any more questions, we'll go back to the PowerPoint. And um, just a reminder for our upcoming trainings, we have our next new user workshop on November 1st. So it's the first Thursday of the month. And then again on December 6th. And we have our advanced user forum, um, which is just authors exchanging ideas on advanced logic, best practices, new uses, um, maybe what's coming up in the new software potentially. And the next one is this month on October 18th. It's every other month on the third Thursday of the month. So October 18th and December 20th are the next trainings. You can register for all the trainings on a2jauthor.org. Once you register for one set of the one training, you register for all the trainings in that series. And before um, before we go, are there any other questions? Okay, if you do end up having more questions, feel free to email me here, jbolak at kentlaw.edu or call. And a big thanks to Callie for letting us use their go-to meeting services. And I will talk to all of you next month. Thank you.